Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and while I'm waiting for the Pixel 6 to turn up, I thought we'd look at something slightly different here on the channel. Now, I've never really got involved or really actually understood the rugged smartphone market, so when Doogie reached out with their V10, I thought that I would take a look, see what it's all about, and exactly who a rugged smartphone is actually for, so... Let's take a look. And if you couldn't tell by the title of this video and that intro, this video is sponsored by the Doogie V10 and all links are going to be down in the description bar below. On the surface, the V10 sounds a little crazy with its specs. You've got an 8,000 milliamp power battery with the option to use the device as a power bank, large screen and software that wouldn't be out of place on a premium mid-ranger. Is it the newest Android flagship on the market? Well, no. But is it for a very specific person with very specific needs? Yes, and kind of no. So starting off with the unboxing, and the first thing we have is a little unusual, it's actually a tool. This is used to get into the SIM card tray and the cover for the USB-C connector on the bottom. Next up we have a lanyard which could be attached to the V10 for that extra secure around the wrist look. You then have a USB-C to C cable which is also very durable and strong, a little bit like the device itself. And that goes into the USB-C wall charger which is a fast charger at 33 watts. Now while the charger is a fast charger, it does have to power an 8,500 milliamp power battery, but more on that later. And then of course you do have a manual with all the specs and information about the device itself. You also get a screen protector included with screen protector and accessory pack with everything in it that you need from the dust removal stickers to the alcohol wipes for easy installation. It still blows my mind that more budget devices these days do come with a ton of extra accessories in terms of screen protectors and cases. Now yes you don't need a case for the V10 but to have a screen protector is a really nice thing to add and it does also come with a built in screen protector straight out of the box so you've got one as a backup. Now onto the device itself and it's no secret that rugged smartphones aren't the most premium looking devices in the world and again the v10 is no exception it is very thick and weighs a ton it comes in at 340 grams which is two and a half pixel fives also the thickness of the device is 16.1 millimeters which again comparing it to the pixel 5 that comes in at eight millimeters so it's pretty much double what you're going to be getting with a standard premium smartphone from 2021 most of the device is made up of a very durable strong rubber material and you do have metal rails on the side and the screen itself is going to be covered in corning gritter glass 3. Now while this isn't the newest version of Gritter Glass, it does come with a lip right around the whole edge of the screen, so if you are going to be putting it face down, the actual screen itself isn't going to be touching the surface it's on. Also around back you have the triple camera layout, the place for the lanyard, and also the speaker itself. Now the speakers aren't necessarily the best thing in the world, you don't have stereo speakers or anything, and this one is on the back of the device, so if you are going to place it down flat on a table for example, then it is going to lose pretty much all of its sound quality, but it is quite loud, yes it can lose some clarity at higher volumes, but let's do a very quick sound test. On the right of the device you have your volume up and down, power button and the fingerprint reader. Now while it reads okay, the sensor is actually a little bit low for that fingerprint scanner. Now what this means is if you are just picking up the device or even just holding it in your hand for example, even if you hold it like this, it sometimes registers this here as a misread and if you get 10 of those, you're going to have to enter your password straight away. So it would be nice if it was moved up ever so slightly or even integrated with the power button, but again you've got some choice there. The left hand side of the device holds the SIM card tray which is fully weather sealed and then you do have a multi-function button which can be customised to your liking and it's also got a nice texture to it as well. And lastly then down the bottom you have a USB-C connector and again this does have a door around it to keep in that water resistance and okay yes it's not the most convenient thing if you need to plug it in really quickly but again for it to be protected fully water and dust resistant I've not really got any complaints and again if you are out and about if you're on a building site or just going outdoors then this is going to come in really handy and you don't need to worry about it at all. The screen is a 6.3 inch IPS LCD with a resolution of 1560 by 720. Now the viewing angles aren't necessarily the best thing in the world if you do have it off axis because it is going to be that IPS panel display, it is going to lose some of the colour and also some of the contrast and overall brightness but if you are looking at it heads on it's actually a pretty good display. If you're watching some full screen video or even any streaming service for example or just in general navigating around the UI it's actually quite bright and quite colourful. Now yes outdoor viewing could definitely be a little bit 
better and it's a shame that it isn't the brightest screen out there because it is made for outdoors but overall it's a nice panel nice colors and some pretty good contrast to it as well now that's the design and screen out of the way how's the actual performance now most people know that with a rugged smartphone that's one of the downsides the performance isn't necessarily great along with the camera but just in general the phone feels very sluggish it doesn't have the newest version of android and it's got maybe a skin on it like the cat phones for example so again what are we working with here with the v10 well, it actually surprised me quite a lot. Inside you have the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor clocked at 2.2 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, which can be extended up to 256 gigs of storage with the built-in micro SD card, which again is on the same side that you're gonna have the SIM card tray. So if you wanna have two SIM cards or one SIM card and one SD card, you've got the option to do so. So overall, the performance is good. Now, yes, it's not amazing. And I use the word good because it's kind of middle of the road in regards to the price to performance ratio that you're going to be getting on the v10 it's fast enough for day-to-day -day tasks alongside some light gaming modern titles like call of duty mobile and asphalt 8 work great here with lower settings and the frame rate itself can dip ever so slightly but pretty much solid at 30 frames a second and just navigating the os is also pretty fluid the screen itself is locked to 60 hertz which i really had to get used to coming from the 90 hertz and above on other devices now while there's not necessarily a lot of competition the v10 is probably the fastest smoothest and most fluid rugged phone I've actually seen. Now onto the second part of a rugged phone that normally comes in very weak and isn't very good that is the cameras. So here we have a triple setup with a 48 megapixel main sensor, eight megapixel wide angle, and a two megapixel depth sensor. So while yes, it is technically a triple camera setup, you've only really got two cameras that are gonna be used on the daily. The depth sensor is only there to capture depth information for things like portrait mode and things. But as we'll see on some of the examples, I wouldn't necessarily call it portrait mode. It's more of a sort of blur slash bokeh sort of effect around the edge of the photo. Now there is actually a fourth sensor around the back and that's for the infrared that's built in now this can be used on people to check their temperature or just on objects however doogie does state to not use it for medical reasons it's just there to gauge some of the temperature of certain things if you do need to use it in a pinch to check your own temperature you can actually place it directly on your forehead to see exactly what your temperature is going to be but you can also use it just in general to see how hot or cold things are around the house it's maybe a bit of a gimmick but nice to see nonetheless now, while the photos and videos don't look bad, I'll let you guys be the judge of exactly how good the quality is. Now, keep in mind though that this is a rugged smartphone, so it's probably mainly gonna be used for reference photos or videos of site work, for example, and not necessarily for those really super high quality landscape shots and portrait mode photos, so that's definitely something to keep in mind.
And lastly, then we have the battery life, which is absolutely incredible. But then again, with an 8,500 milliamp hour battery, it's kind of expected. So you're going to be getting around 27 hours of battery standby time, 15 hours of music and video playback, and around 16 hours of gaming. You also get wireless charging built in, but that's going to take a while to get to that 100% charge. Now you can also use the phone as a power bank for other devices using a wired connection. And like I mentioned, you do get a 33 watt hour charger in the actual box itself. So getting from zero to 100% is quoted on Doogie's website as being around an hour to an hour and a half with getting a 40% charge in around 30 minutes. And that's going to do it guys for this video on the Doogie V10 and one of my first rugged smartphone experiences. Overall what you get in the packaging itself with the phone, lanyard, wall charger, USB-C cable, screen protector and all those other accessories, I think the value for money is definitely there and for a certain person I think this is one of the best rugged phones available on the market currently. But it also throws in some other features that people won't necessarily be expecting for this type of device, like a good camera system, battery that literally lasts for days, and fast and also responsive software. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you've got any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section below or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass. If you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to do so. And once you've hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you're notified any time I post a new video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.